Hello, 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 and welcome to another coordinating call of DiEM25, the Movement for Europe, featuring progressive ideas you won't hear anywhere else. Today, we're going to be discussing communication, specifically, how do we communicate our policies? Now, let me give you a bit of background. In April 2019, we launched a campaign called the Green New Deal for Europe. Its purpose was to unite political forces, community activists, unions around a set of proposals to combat the twin crises of austerity and climate breakdown. But a lot has changed since then. Obviously, the political landscape has changed, but also, at least in the progressive world, as they say in English, everyone and their mother has a Green New Deal. Um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the Labour Party, the Green Party, and I'm sure there are various others out there. So we've decided to rebrand our Green New Deal for Europe campaign, uh, to repackage it, to pitch it differently. And we're in the middle of that process. And this is one of those working discussions. So this will be a brainstorm to decide uh, what direction do we actually take in terms of rebranding, because ultimately this will be the, the campaign and the proposals that we'll be taking to the ballot box in forthcoming elections that we, whatever we decide to compete in. You out there, if you are thinking, I've got some idea for your brainstorm, or you just disagree or wildly agree with something that uh, we're saying, please put it in the chat on YouTube and we'll read your comments out between the interventions. Now I will hand it over to Dushan, who is our Green New Deal for Europe coordinator. Dushan. Thank you, Mehran. And hello to everyone who's watching us. Uh, basically, before we get the backlash right away, let me explain that we are well, very well aware of certain disadvantages, disadvantages of rebranding, but we just think that uh, advantages outweigh them. Basically, yes, that, that there is a possibility of losing uh, good rebranding. We know that we have nice colors and nice website and stuff like that. And that Green New Deal is well-known name that's usually attractive to public. On the other side, uh, it's not really representative of the end. Not just its colors, but it's also its name. And we need something that is going to be resonating better with our target population, which is 99%. And uh, Green New Deal, yes, attracts people, but it attracts only, let's call it intellectual elite or environmentalists and so on and so on. And we are trying to fight with and for the people that are much, much, uh, how to say it, broader category. Also, unfortunately, even though our Green New Deal, as Mehran already explained, was one of the first, especially for Europe, uh, it can now be easily confused by the other deals that outsourced us because of money and, and other resources, uh, like Green New Deal by Greens, uh, UK Green New Deal. There is also now that so-called Green Deal by European Union. And the thing is that we really don't have time to explain what is Roosevelt's deal and how is ours Green New Deal different from all the others, let alone that the people that we are fighting with and for have time to do that. They don't. Uh, and let's not make it a technical matter because it's so much more. Green New Deal or whatever the future name is going to be needs something that's uh, self-explanatory and something that's being integrated inside of DM structures because at the end of the day that's our blueprint for Europe just transition. Uh, we have other things on the agenda other than just rebranding like opposing ratification of CETA because if it gets ratified by national parliaments it's going to be a disaster and only because, because there's a possibility uh, to do so because of certain, let's call it loophole by European Union, we actually have the chance to stop the elite in most direct way to do so. So we have other actions that we need uh, to organize around in the most direct way and to make European Union and Europe in general 
democratized. So let's go on with this and let's have something that's really DM-like, workers-friendly, and something that's both radical and realistic in its name and in its nature. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Tisha. And Ivana. Thanks. Uh, I very much agree with uh, everything Dushan said, uh, and especially this. I think we're losing you there, Ivana. Unfortunately. Would anyone else like to speak while Ivana sorts out her internet connection? Very quickly, uh, me. Um, I'm, I'm Renata. Super happy with this rebranding, and it comes in time. Uh, the G20 is meeting in Naples uh, very soon on climate issues, so it, it might be like you know like a good target uh, to test the, the new branding, even even just to do some test groups on w which uh, like testing styles and so on, um, and connected with that. Um, I'm guess that you are aware of that. If not, I can. Um, um, send you um, send you the um, details. Thank you, Renata. Any other thoughts on that? I know Van is dis disconnected for a bit, and she'll be coming back in a sec. I can try without the video. Okay, try without video. Go for it. Sorry for the internet. Uh, so uh, basically, the the, the rebranding. I mean, if we decide that uh, we are gearing up uh, for 2024 EU elections, uh, then we should also look at our overall uh, policy proposals and how Green New Deal then fits into all of this. And it's not then just about the name and the branding, but much more and how to emphasize the uh, social policies that we have hidden inside and people are often misguided that it's just quote unquote about green transition and not also about the basic goods, for example. Um, thanks. Thanks, Ivana Peral. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes I'm being uh, very pessimistic, but should we not be a little more realistic because Green New Deal. Let's look to these three words, uh, these concepts. I mean, uh, green, yes, it gives a hope uh, for a beautiful world. But new, the, the concept new is really um, not a convincing uh, concept at the moment uh, because of uh, instead of new, probably we should say urgent. And uh, the same with deal. Is it deal or is it rescue? So I asked myself these questions. And uh, yes, Green New Deal is positive, optimist, and very attractive. But is it true? Let's think about it because let, uh, I'm living in Turkey and the three seas, Black Sea again, and the Mediterranean is under political and ideological assault. So let's, uh, I think uh, I also agree that we shouldn't uh, think about the, the title, but the content and the truth behind this content. And secondly, I sh think we should concentrate on these three C's because these three C's are not only um, ecological uh, issues, but also very cultural issues. It is connected to culture uh, to historical culture, to memory. I mean, let's uh, accept that uh, this region we are living in is the most mem memoryful of region of the world. So 
this is my uh, opinion. Thank you, Barrow. Yanis. I have an attachment to the Green New Deal, uh, which is personal. And that's because I gave it, first time I spoke of a Green New Deal was in 2002 in Brussels, in, at the European Parliament, I gave a, a talk to the progressive caucus, it existed back then, comprising the left and the Greens and the Social Democrats. And I gave a speech in which I was advocating a Green New Deal in 2002. So you can imagine, given that the Green New Deal was also the main policy of, um, um, am I frozen? Can you hear me? Hello? We hear you, we hear you. Okay. So everybody was frozen, okay. So I'm saying this because I'm the person that has the greatest um, reason not to ditch the branding of uh, Green New Deal. But having listened to do some, we need to, do, to ditch it. There's no doubt we need to ditch it because um, uh, it has been replicated. It has divided and multiplied. Everybody has a bloody green new deal. Uh, and it means nothing. Uh, even the European Commission has a green deal. Okay, they took the new out. But they, you, 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 now the term means nothing. It's been emptied of content. Uh, the you know when Exxon Mobil came up with um, a research paper entitled uh, "The Importance of of, a, of the Green New Deal," I thought, okay, right, that's it. Uh, now it means it is it is senseless. Uh, okay, that's point number one. Point number two: We are in the process, not just of rebranding the Green New Deal, but also of rethinking. DM 2.0, a more radical uh, DM, a DM that goes beyond uh, the lofty ideas of democratizing the, the uh, you know Europe, uh, a, a, a more radical DM that looks at capitalism and its latest incarnation, and makes plans for post-capitalism. Given that the Green New Deal is our main agenda for doing all that, uh, that has to be reflected. The word green uh, has become conservative. The word green, green is a new brown. Uh, you, can, you can see that from the, the way in which greenwashing has become an, an art or a science or a combination of art and science. The greens in Germany are what, what they are, so I don't need to say more on this. So I think we need to drop not just the whole title, but even the word green from our title. Um, some time ago, I've been uh, putting out the, the ideological and analytical position that DM25 is, um, relies for many of our policies on green Keynesianism, but we're going beyond green Keynesianism. So I had an article, remember, beyond Green Keynesianism. I think that the new manifesto that we will come up by next February uh, is going to signal our move beyond Green Keynesianism anyway. Okay, so what should the new, new branding be? I haven't had much time to think about it, but I think that, in, that the word ecological is one that we must reclaim. Um, ditching the word green, the words new and deal, Belal is right, have to go. Um, so off the top of my head, if you put a gun on my head now without having had an opportunity to think about that, this is simply food for thought for discussion. And then I shut up. I, I was right, you know, keeping notes here on my phone. Something like ecological post-capitalist shared prosperity. Some, somehow to combine the notions of shared prosperity post-capitalist and ecological. Um, I'm not suggesting that term, right? Eco-PSP, no, I'm not suggesting that. Sounds terrible. Sounds like a, you know, a, a brand for some kind of equipment. But I think ecological, post-capitalist, and a prosperity, a version of prosperity, not growth, not development, not industrial, but prosperity that is shared. That's my... 
two and a half cents for the time being. Thanks, Yanis. I was wondering how we would fit that on a T-shirt. A um, couple of quick comments from the chat here. A suggestion from Emilio. You are DM. It should be named DM New Deal. Own it. Another, which I think a little tongue-in-cheek, perhaps. Um, he says, Green Nuclear Deal is a better name. <laughs> OK. Um, and another suggests emphasizing sustainability over green from Sean Singh. Rosemary, over to you. Thank you. I think we're beginning to demonstrate forcibly the enormous perils of attempting to come up with a, a name off the top of our heads. However, I don't think that we can hide behind the, the excuse that we ought to be talking in depth about content forever, because actually this art form, which is called finding excellent names for things, is one that in the commercial world, they pay millions of pounds for to people who are incredibly talented because it is such a very specific craft. So having set myself up for a huge fall, I'm now going to put my faith in a suggestion, which is DM's green transformation. I like this idea because I actually do think we have to hang on to the green. I just don't think DM's ecological transformation does anything to make us more accessible. And for me, green says something about the relationship between man and nature. I think that's an absolutely vital part of the dialectic here. I'd like to go on to talk about why I think the relationship between man and nature is mirrored at this moment in time for the future of the species, actually, in the importance of the relationship between man and man or woman and woman. I mean, the, the uh, fellow human beings, the relationship between fellow human beings on the one high side and the relationships between man and nature on the other. So, um, yes, I'd like to throw DM's green transformation into the mix. And transformation is important because it doesn't monkey around with pretensions of revolutionary glory but it does suggest change which is truly transformative. And whatever else we're doing, that's what we're engaged in here. Thanks, Rosemary. Johannes? Thank you. Uh, really interesting discussion to follow. Uh, I hope also the viewers uh, enjoy it. And please write more suggestions into the chat so we get more ideas uh, going. We'll also reach out uh, to the membership and ask for more ideas and a, a wider brainstorm to bring it back into this group. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, bring a little more of a strategic point um, because we have also a progressive agenda for Europe, which is the name for our overall policy program, um, where the Green New Deal for Europe has been a part of and uh, other policy papers like uh, peace and international policy or um, technological sovereignty, uh, migration and so on uh, fall under. Um, and I asked ask myself uh, the question, shouldn't we um, take the name for our overall policy program um, and turn this into a campaign, um, also campaigning for these important topics uh, that I just mentioned. And there are some others, of course, that I now haven't mentioned um, to also think ahead uh, towards the um, European elections in 2024 and uh, possibly already um, have a name that we are putting out there uh, in campaign activism that we then also can use and um, uh, show as an electoral program to um, really make full use of our double strategy of movement and party. Um, so that is my contribution. Um, I haven't uh, come up with a really good name proposal uh, like, like others you have. I hope some more speakers can bring some interesting proposals. Thanks. Thank you, Johannes. A comment from Zoe Lujic on the chat, agreeing with you, Rosemary. Transformation is a very good word to use, especially as we're working on transformation of energy within our Green New Deal for Europe policy revision work. Um, any, other, any other comments from any of you guys? Still thinking, digesting? Who wants to go next? Lewis Sretko, would... Sretko, is... Sretko why, has why his... Why you your, your, your yellow hand up? Yeah, it's, it's too sophisticated for me, you know. Come on. <laughs> and, and Lewis, I know that you had some comments uh, that you're putting in the chat. You can speak after Stretchko and put them out there. Go for it, Stretchko. Yeah, since this is a working meeting, which happens to be 
uh, live transmitted. Uh, I must honestly say that uh, I think it's impossible to find a name now today, of course, and that we will have to brainstorm more uh, and also crowdsource uh, different proposals. But what I think is the most important thing is of course, that we all agree on the content, uh, that we all agree that uh, BN25 has to uh, be both, as Dushan said, realistic and radical at the same time. You know, I'm saying this uh, at a moment when today uh, two interesting events happened. Uh, on the one hand, Ursula von der Leyen uh, of the European Commission uh, is in a visit in Croatia, uh, cheering uh, uh, the re recovery plan, so-called recovery plan. At the same time, Viktor Orban is meeting Alexander Vucic in Serbia. Uh, why is this interesting? Uh, because at the very beginning, when, uh, uh, when the European Commission announced uh, a, European new, uh, a European Green Deal without the new, uh, uh, Ursula von der Leyen said that uh, her leadership of the European Commission would be a geopolitical one. Uh, a geopolitical one. And what we can see what is playing out these days is precisely geopolitics. On the one hand, the greenwashing of the European Commission uh, uh, with uh, a green deal, which is nearly not sufficient to get us out of, of, of the utter climate crisis and a very slow transition towards sustainable energy. Uh, at the same time, the problem of the European Commission, of course, is the externalization of costs uh, and extractivism, which will continue. Uh, so on the one hand, you have this Europe, this European Commission. On the other hand, you can see that a new bloc is being formed. Uh, Serbia is particularly interesting. Uh, uh, I know many members from Serbia could say more about it uh, uh, because of the extraction and the mining which is going on now. Uh, both on the one, hand, on the one hand, uh, uh, the Rio Tinto uh, mining company, uh, which is extracting lithium, or trying to, because there were big protests in Serbia and the petition. On the other hand, is China and copper mining. Uh, so what I think, besides thinking about the name, we should think about geopolitics as well, uh, in which way a Green New Deal uh, is not just a European Green New Deal or a Green New Deal for Europe uh, without taking into consideration uh, other countries, the externalization, of course, and the extraction of lithium, for instance, now in Serbia, which is part of Europe, but not part of the European Union, I think we have to broaden uh, uh, our policies uh, when it comes to ecology and sustainable development. I don't have a name now, uh, of course, we will have to continue talking about it, but I think we have to go much more radical against extractivism uh, and externalization, which again means also to go much more radical against greenwashing uh, especially given the fact that now everyone speaks about a Green New Deal. Uh, and even as Yanis said, this big business is now also talking about Green New Deals. Uh, so, you know, when you have the, the ocean burning in front of your eyes, uh, I think it's insufficient anymore to talk just about a new deal. Uh, we have to be much more radical than that. Thanks, Srechko. And, and as you implied just there, for viewers that are just joining, we're not just talking about picking a name. We're actually using the name of this campaign or the renaming and rebranding of this campaign as a prism through which to, to, to look at what we would like to focus on in terms of the content. Um, Lewis. Well, thanks, Mehran. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with what Roseberry and Srechko said about us not being able to you know, come up with such an important piece of marketing, let's say, what it is, on the fly. Uh, I would, however, but like to make a note about dropping the word green as well. Um, I think that, you know, doesn't really work with us and bring too much confusion. Uh, so I very much like, um, you know, sustainability to be an element in the, in the name. Uh, now, uh, th there is an aspect I'd like to discuss and I'd like to hear Dozen's um, thoughts about it, which I think, and it's connected actually with what Tresco just said, as to, you know, to, to make her very valuable and really the best content ever, uh, sorry for the lack of modesty, but I think that our Green New Deal, as it is called right now, continues to be innovative and, you know, avant-garde. Uh, how do we make that popular and spread out? And by this, what I mean is, how do we become part of the conversation, even in the institutions and all of these things that, you know, are taking place right now? I think that's really important. Uh, I, I, I think that we need to, you know, uh, get in and jump into the official discussions because we are a little bit on the fringe and in order for us to you know make our, our voice heard we also need to be part of those conversations and say no this is 
you know, the right way to go. And concretely, you know, I'm speaking about all these forums, uh, you know, Renata mentioned one, you know, we need to hack into those conversations as well, because those are the ones, as Susan rightly said, that gather all the attention and, you know, cover all the front pages and whatnot. And we need to be there, like it or not. And the second point connected with Stresco, I call Holiday Free. Ours is a blueprint that needs to be taken globally, you know, from here to Latin America and everywhere else. Uh, so it's no longer a pan-European thing because because of our DNA or international DNA and for things to work and because we're addressing issues that are actually global and interconnected, we need to, you know, you know, go one, you know, step uh, further and go global with it. And of course, we can. We have the Progressive International to help us do that as well, uh, you know, and other tools. So, but I really want to hear what Susan has to say about taking part of that, those conversations as well. Thanks. Thanks, Louis. Dushan, would you like to respond? Of course. Yeah. Thank you for the question, Louis. And first of all, let me just uh, stress something before I answer to that, that really Green New Deal is much more than just uh, than just environmentalism issues. So it's heavily, heavily connected with everything that DM does. It's our project, campaign, and most probably political programs. So it has housing, jobs, and all the others. And we identified some gaps inside of the blueprint. Uh, uh, as Srećko was speaking, influence on so-called global south is one of them. Even though we mentioned some structures and shutting down tax havens and don't letting uh, the companies to go to other countries, uh, we also have some more job to do. And we also have to incorporate aspects from Yanis's another now inside of Green New Deal to help our blueprint for post-capitalism to be even more, even deeper. Uh, so getting back to what uh, Luis said, I think that through NCs, our national collectives and our provisional national collectives and through all of our DSCs, we have to work with unions. We have to mobilize the people, mobilize our already registered members who are more than 150,000. And as you know, they are, majority of them are not really active. So let's mobilize them first and let them identify with DM and Green New Deal and our ideas and incorporate that inside of their identities. Then they can work to mobilize trade unions, workers unions, and we can uh, really be present on occasions where it's important to be. Like we applied for COP26, as you all know, Unfortunately, or not unfortunately, we'll see, uh, we got rejected. Uh, we assume that's because uh, they found us too radical or whatever, but we didn't have an individual answer. And that's why we are going to have alternative COP called COP off, because we need to have our voices heard and we need to provide the platform to the people and all the others uh, that don't have the space in uh, mainstream media and mainstream spaces because they voice, their voices are not heard. Unfortunately, variety of coalitions taught us that uh, we are much more being used for policies than, uh, than we actually get from, from those coalitions. Uh, so uh, right now, I'd say that we have to focus, focus uh, to be political movement and to be to have uh, structured electoral deals that can push this political agenda and this political program without compromises. We don't need seats. We just need this program to to be in life, to be in uh, in Europe. Uh, for that, we need much bigger acknowledgement by the broader public, not just environmentalists, as I said before. And we need to be out on streets. Unfortunately, COVID <laughs> made, made it hard, but we are thinking through how to, how to make it easier for our comrades to be on the streets. So that's one, one aspect. And there's also multiple others, like trying to reach the media, which uh, 
which will provide the platform. We are also working with Green New Deal hubs uh, that share our resources around and so on and so on. But most importantly, if you ask me, uh, current issues need to be debated from the stance of Green New Deal for Europe policy. So when we have DMTV, when we have interviews, let's debate those issues from the stance on how they can be solved because we already have the blueprint on how they can be solved. And now let's present that to the public. Sorry for taking so long, but it's a complex issue. Thanks, Dushan. Interesting thoughts. Uh, Yanis. Oh, no, you, uh, Juliana. She okay, hasn't. Juliana first and Yanis. Go. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, I also don't have any concrete proposal uh, today, but um, I like the direction of this post-capitalistic uh, um, transformation plan sort of thing, because people, you know, I think most importantly, it is if people hear the name of it, it's what they associate with it. And with the Green New Deal um, in the past years, I felt like the key question for people was, um, is it only for the environment like people were like thinking that it is um it is primarily about uh about uh, saving the earth so to say um, and that the, the people that are living in the present are like secondary in this uh, in this sort of program um so they have questions like well, what's with my job or how will the future look for the people and i think that the name has to be uh of this sort that people associate it with their lives. So they think, okay, this could be something for me because, um, um, because it's, we had this world, a word also uh, holistic, you know, it's, um, it's speaking to, to everything, not, and everyone. So um, I think this is, this is an important direction. Why I also, this is also the reason why I think that the green is problematic in itself, not just because of the greenwashing, but because of this misunderstanding of people that they think that the green has nothing to do with real life issues, but more specifically with just um, having an energy to transform, uh, transition and so on and so forth. So it's a very complex um, word nowadays, the green, uh, because there are too many associations with it. Um, so yeah, I, hopefully I, I, it would be great to have to have a name that um, that is not only not too intellectual, but that can be have a holistic meaning and uh, and be explained easily to people. With you know to talk about the core uh, points of the program rather than to have to explain its existence, because this is kind of what we have been doing with the Green New Deal is to explain its existence much more than its content. And yeah, so it would be great to have a name that points to the content already much stronger. Um, this is only what I wanted to add. Thanks, Juliana. Yanis. Uh, yes, Juliana, you're absolutely right. Now, yes, we're ditching Green New Deal. I think that there's a consensus there, but let's not forget what a good name it was. Because unlike, um, you know, Green Transformation, Rosemary, uh, which is a standard Green Party argument since the 1970s. It's so bad, except that, you know, there's no differentiation between uh, what the Green Movement has been saying since the 1970s and what we're saying. You see, the, the reason why I retrieved the New Deal in 2002 and added Green to it was because the New Deal was, in 1933, uh, a very clear program for taking the money of the rich and pressing it into the service of the many. That's what Roosevelt did. That was the, the New Deal. What was it? did it refer to? It referred to that which the Greens today, in Germany, for instance, do not understand. That you don't need to tax people in order to spend on creating jobs, green energy, whatever. The whole point of Roosevelt was, in the New Deal, we are not going to tax, and we're in the middle of a depression, right? But there is all this cash here sit, sitting idly by, 
we're going to put the bankers in a box, yeah, in a kind of prison. We're going to stop the bankers from doing banking things. And we're going to find public financial tools like US Treasury bills by which to soak up the liquidity from the banking system and create jobs with them. That was the new deal. So my idea in 2002 is you add the green to make sure that the investments are not brown. They are not in you know, creating more motorways for um, gas guzzling cars to speed across U America, right? That you're using it in order to create a green energy union, for instance. That was the original idea of 2002. So the Green New Deal embeds the social, the anti-finance, and the green transition or green transformation. So let's not be, let's be clear about that. Even if we all agree that we're going to ditch the Green New Deal, these are three very powerful words that capture a great deal of what is important. And we're going to have a huge problem replacing them. I'm not against replacing them. I already said, yeah, simply because everybody has jumped on the bandwagon and now they have created an inflationary process diluting the meaning of, of the, the three words Green New Deal. Um, we don't have the name yet, but you know, it's good. We're brainstorming. At some point, the name will come to us. But I think it is important to have this conversation. I don't like the idea of sustainability at all, Luis, because it's conservative. I don't want to sustain anything. I want to change everything. Now, I know you what you mean, sustainability in terms of the environment, right? I don't think that we, we even want to say that we want to sustain the, the, ecolo the ecological equilibrium that we have, because the ecological equilibrium we have is really bad. I mean, if we, you look at most ecosystems, right? Um, they, they, even if we do nothing, they're in trouble. So we, we, we want to change the ecological systems. We want to, to, you know, to, to improve them. We don't want to keep them where they are. So anyway, I think that the word sustain, the, the verb to sustain is a conservative verb. It's not part of DiEM 2.0 of the new radicalized DiEM. Uh, I don't like the word green. Be only because it has been completely taken over by everyone else. Uh, transformation is, is great, but it's not enough because the Greens have used it, because we are already experiencing a transformation. You know my article, Techno-Feudalism. It's a transformation of capitalism to techno-feudalism. Transformation is not necessarily a good thing. So, you know, we are going to have a huge task of finding two or three words that will replace the meaning and the signifier of the Green New Deal. But I do believe, um, and thank you to someone, I think Juliana said it, uh, or Ivana said it, one of the two, that it is important to signal that effectively we are adopting a modern version of socialism that we are radicalizing ourselves and we're moving towards an eco-socialist agenda. Those terms are horrible because everybody has taken them. You know, every man and his dog, I won't mention his mother, um, <laughs> has uh, taken eco and socialism and put it together. But anyway, you know what I mean. Thanks, Yanis. A couple of uh, comments from our fellow brainstormers on the chat here. John suggests that regeneration could be a good term. Janet finds uh, transformation a wonk word. Sorry, Rosemary. Um, and Henry Wallace suggests that we go a little bit more radical with anti-capitalist or a similar sentiment needs to be in the name so that it's hard for the project to be co-opted and that we can set our sights and so we can set our sights on the transformation to post-capitalism. Rosemary. Yes, I just wanted to observe that what I'm sort of learning from this conversation is that we do have a, a, the danger and inherent contradiction in what we're looking for, which makes our task even more difficult, which is that on the one hand, we're seeking something that distinguishes us from everyone else and is particular to our particularity. But on the other hand, we want to stay accessible and staying accessible is partly being involved in the language that everyone uses. So I think that is a genuine tug in the whole thought process that we need to, you know, look at uh, straight. 
Thanks, Rosemary. Any any responses, any comments? Okay. Yanis, go for it. Yeah, I, I, look, it's, it's, it's right um, what Rosemary said. We need to be connected to the language everybody uses. But at the same time, we need to add the twist that distinguishes us. So that, that's the twin difficulty that we have. Look, the, the reason why I, I took the floor again is because I want to suggest that we should also consider something completely off its rocker or off our rocker. That is, you know, let's not try to replace the Green New Deal with an ecological green transformation with post-capitalist elements going beyond socialism, you know. How about, I mean, I was thinking now of David Graeber's great expression, everything could be different. Um, how about, you know, DMs, everything must be different policy. Now, I'm not suggesting it, but I'm trying to think of an alternative way of approaching the name, that it should be, you know, something that gets you there and pulls your, uh, your heartstrings, okay? And then people can actually find out what it is. Just putting it out there. Thanks, Yanis. Um, another thing to put out there, perhaps, is that uh, I've noticed several political parties, not necessarily political parties whose views we agree with, uh, rather than talking about programs or manifestos, they're talking about contracts, contracts with, with the people, contracts with the voters. This could be another thought that might just add to the mix. Anyone else? Anyone feeling inspired? No? Well, okay. since nobody's speaking, let me let, 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 let me say something that I need to say. It's got nothing to do with the topic. But um, since people are watching, some of our members are watching, and maybe some enemies as well, who knows? Uh, let me um, say for pub the public that is watching us that uh, uh, the letter that we signed yesterday here in Greece, uh, 95 members of parliament, um, sending it to President Biden on behalf of Julian Assange, uh, was a difficult letter to organize. And it was very difficult for me personally, and I'm saying this in public, I don't care. Uh, you can see that um, we co-signed it with Syriza. I consider Syriza to be a toxic party, a party that has done enormous damage to progressive movements across the world, a party that refused to come to the aid of Julian during the worst and darkest hours when I was calling upon the Syriza leadership to do that. But uh, as I keep telling friends and comrades, what matters today is Julian. What matters is to respond to Stella's and his team's request that we get as many parliamentarians to sign similar letters to Joe Biden, uh, because it is crucial that we get him out of there. And if this means that um, we put our signatures next to those of people that have um, in the past demonstrated an incapacity to do the right thing by Julian or by progressive causes, we will do that. Because what comes above all else is um, to create maximum pressure to have him released. Thank you, Yanis. Um, I'm going to hand it over now to Dushan just to close the, the topic of the discussion. Um, Dushan, wrap it up. Let me just uh, first invite our viewers and members uh, inside of our three new, newly established thematic DSCs that are going to be actually focused on the third revision of our Green New Deal for Europe policy, which is a big step for us, and we definitely need your help. So uh, if you are interested first in agriculture and animal rights, then in establishing new green jobs and what does that mean and thirdly in energy just transition and nature preservation please contact us uh, we will create uh, we will you all actually sorry there's already a thread on forum regarding that and you can uh, join 
are mattermost where all the communication regarding the campaign is happening. Also, uh, we are going to democratize uh, the process of uh, rebranding and name change. So uh, there's also going to be a forum thread on that uh, where we are going to call you to submit your proposals. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's all in that regards. Uh, rebranding is just one of uh, the things that we are focusing right now in the campaign. So join us, uh, mail us at uh, gnde at dm dm 25org Thank you, Dushan. And thank you to uh, you out there who's been listening to this. Uh, if you'd like to continue the brainstorm and the discussion and you're not yet a DM25 member, please just go to dm25.org slash join and we will see you again here in two weeks same time same place for another meeting of our coordinating collective cheers <laughs>